Okay, so in this presentation, I'm going to outline how you can flip bits in some AES modes. With this, the problem relates to the lack of uh, an authentication code, usually called a MAC code, message authentication code, onto the cipher so that the when we decrypt, we can check the, the none of the bits have actually changed when we look at the the MAC code that's been generated. So the, the cipher modes that allow for this to happen are GCM and CCM, and most of the other modes lack this type of authentication or integrity checking. So this is some Python code. We can see here are the modes ECB, BCBC are block modes, OFB, CTR, CFB, and GCM are cipher, are stream cipher modes. So I'll just explain cipher modes. So here we are. This is a very simple program to be able to encrypt and then decrypt. So there's no modification in this one at all. So let's run the code. There we go. So the message is pbop one dollar, and there is the result there. Okay, we can even put in our own message here. Okay, the thing to notice is that the number of bytes relates to the number of characters in the message. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine uh, characters here. So we see in the stream cipher, there's no padding or anything like that. We will get nine bytes on the output there. This differs from CBC which is a block mode where we have 16 bytes in a block. So we were just to change that, but we'd have to put some padding in uh, to that, but we would actually see there would be blocks that would be built. But this is a stream cipher, so it's very easy for us to uh, to map that this, this cipher output here is mapped to this one. So we can go in and modify our cipher text like this. Okay, so this converts our cipher into a byte array. With a byte array, we can actually uh, modify each of the elements of the byte array. So then we'll pick a character to, to flip and and for example, if this was character nine, then that's that's eight, the index value of eight in the byte array that we're changing. What we'll do is that we'll flip, when we XOR, that will flip uh, the two least significant bits over. Uh, because if we've, we XOR something with a one, it changes the state from a zero to one or a one to zero. Okay, so that will flip the two least significant bits of the value. And then we convert it back into bytes again. And we should be able to see the cipher after it. And then we'll try and decrypt to see if we can decrypt it and then print out the result. Okay, so by default, um, we're going to flip the ninth character so we look at it and then the message that we have is here one two three four five six seven eight nine so it's going to flip this character here and a, a, a one if we want to change that two to a two then we flip the two least significant bits so we can change it from a zero to a one okay so let's go and try that out to save it first. We can see here that we've changed that. So if we now look at the cipher, then we can see, hopefully, that uh, the bits that have been changed. So we see CC, AB, and then a nine here. So what's happened here is that we have changed this value to a nine. 
So a 10 is, is uh, an 8, a 0 for a 4, and then a 2. So it's 1, 0, 1, 0. And we're changing that to a 9, which is 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay, so the two least significant bits have been flipped there. But we can target any part of the message if we want. So pop one dollar and let's target character number one. So in this case it's going to take the P and we'd have to look at the ASCII table to see if we flip the two bits of a P what we get, but we'll give it a try. And we can see there that we've flipped the bits to produce an S. Okay, so in this way, we can change any of the bits and in any of the cipher message. So this shows that you shouldn't really be using uh, modes such as ECB, CTR, and so on. It's a good idea to use DCM mode. Thanks.